I don't want to be the person who's like, it's cool, whatever. But I also don't want to be the person who's like, it's so cool, I'm so lucky. But it was so cool and I was so lucky to be the person who got to put it out there. What's up, Popverse? Veronica Valencia here, and I am with a very special guest. She mastered the way of the leaf, avatar extraordinaire, and podcasting champion, Janet Varney. How are you today? Veronica, I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm very good, and I like that we brought it. <laughs> I know. I, this is so dumb. Like, I... Before we even started filming, I was like, what am I doing? I'm so huge, and then I wear huge shoes. It's silly. Anyway, I'm up here. Hello. Does anyone need to know what the weather is like up here? Salty? Cloudy? A little rainy? I don't know what their salt came from, but uh, it's magic. It's magic. It's good for bending, though, I'm sure. It's wonderful <laughs> for bending. That's a great recipe for bending. It's salty air. Really? So I would like to talk to you a little bit about Braving the Elements. Yes. You have been in the Avatar universe for some time now. So what has the experience been like to actually go back, watch the show, and start to realize like, oh yeah, that's what was going on? Oh my gosh, it has been so amazing. It's been so wonderful doing it with Dante Bosco, who of course plays Zuko in the first series. Uh, he and I have been friends for many years, and I was like, Bosco, you got to do this with me. Come on, buddy. And we, from the very beginning, likened ourselves to like the kid who's cool, who's sits in the back of class, that's Dante. You can already tell that's not me. I am the one who is like, mm, um, I read something in the art book. Uh, so it is a bit, but like, we have so much fun. We laugh so much. We've had the most extraordinary guests. You know, Nick, it's Nickelodeon's podcast with iHeart. So we're able to mine the avatar verse for the cast and the creators, the fight choreographer, the writers, the directors, and everyone brings in their own memories and experience. And and it has flushed out the Avatar verse for us in a way that I never knew was possible. So now I get to nerd out and I'm so much more well informed when I do panels. And now people want to talk to me about other characters. They don't want to just talk about Korra, the Korra, uh, Korra characters. They want to talk about Uncle Iroh because they know how much I love him. So it has broadened my whole experience of doing cons in a way that is like a dream come true. And I really like how you touched upon the sheer amount of guests that you had on, because it really is bringing in everyone from the Avatar universe, so people and fans can truly understand, like, hey, this is what everyone did, and this is really how this uh, show came to be. Absolutely. I mean, we always, I loved what Jennifer Hale said when she did the podcast, and she, of course, does the voice of Avatar Kyoshi and June, the bounty hunter. But she said, you know, the actors, we're the ink at the tip of the pen. You see us in the sense that you're seeing the character and hearing our voice, but all of the work that goes into creating this amazing world is happening before we even get there, or it's happening after we do our little tiny thing, and there's no way that the world could be as amazing as it is without all of these different people with all of their skill sets. So getting a chance to celebrate that and you know, take, take ourselves down a peg, I think has been really <laughs> lovely. And, you know, you are being able to watch the show now through a different lens, at a different time. Are there any decisions that maybe characters made that you're like, maybe you didn't understand back then, but now you do, or just things you're now coming to realize? That's such a good question, Veronica, by the way. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's the amazing thing about these shows is that you're going to come at them from wherever you are in your life, and that is always going to be a different place. And so where I was when I first saw the show and what I fell in love with and what I kept coming back for is all still there, but it's these layers. It's this library that I'm building for myself in my head and in my heart where I see a scene differently now and I you know it used to be I was like annoyed with Zuko about choices he made and now I feel so much compassion for him but I'm also thinking so much about Iroh because I'm a little older than I was when it first was airing and I see things from his perspective so for sure it's a it's that gift that keeps on giving and then we'll talk to somebody on the show and I'll go back and watch the same episode we just watched and I'll see it in a totally different way because of the perspective they brought amazing and speaking of amazing you actually recently were able to deliver some very exciting and amazing news at san diego comic-con about the new movies coming out from avatar studios can you talk a little bit about the experience probably being the first person to actually know what was going on and then being able to share that with this fandom that was so that was the most beautiful thing that came out of getting COVID. 
Uh, I did not. I knew that I wasn't. I was working on a TV show, and we kind of all got it on the set. And uh, and I knew I wasn't going to be able to go to Comic Con. And we had known that we were going to be making this big announcement. And so Avatar Studios said, "Well, why don't you make it as a video, and then that can be part of the experience of being there, and you'll feel like you were there in some way." So they let me say, "Yes, the first movie. It's confirmed. It's going to be about Aang and his friends." And you know that news definitely went out into the world. And uh, and it was the it, I mean it really was I hate to be I don't want to be the person who's like it's cool whatever but I also want to be the person who's like it's so cool I'm so lucky but it was so cool and I was so lucky to be the person who got to put it out there and hopefully anybody who listens to podcast knows like I'm as excited as anybody so the love is real and. As a fan, is there anything specifically that you would want to see in this movie? Oh my gosh, I'm just so excited to see Aang and the gang. I am, I love that group so much. I feel like I could disappear on a vacation with them and just have a blast and learn so much and laugh so much. So wherever in the timeline they're going to pick up with the movie, I know I'm going to love it. But I'm also like very curious to see when they're going to do because I also don't know what time frame it's going to be. So that part is still a mystery. And you know Mike and Brian pretty well, our Avatar dads. Yes. Indeed. What are the chances the next movie will be Korra? That you think? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the rumors are running around fast and fierce. Um, I've made it no secret that anything they do I'm going to show up for because of all Avatar, of all universes that have been expanded on, to me the one that was begging for it the most was the Avatarverse because we've had precious little that you've seen on the screen. Now, the books, the comics, all of that, phenomenal, get into it if you haven't already. But in terms of what we see animated on the screen and you think about all the other universes you love, it's like... We need a some more Avatar. So they could do this forever and none of us would ever get tired because every single character you meet in the show, you're like, hmm, I guess I would watch a season just about them, right? Right, and there's so much to explore too. Yes, it's such an, and their, their standard of quality is so high that you know if it's coming from them, it's going to be magical. And so you have Braving the Elements, you also have the JV Club. Is there anything that you can talk about um, that's coming up for either of those podcasts or something else that you're working on? Oh, sure. Um, well, the show that I was working on, which I am glad to say more than I just that we got sick, uh, this variant, y'all, this variant, Am I right? Um, is a, an Apple TV show starring Rose Byrne and Seth Rogen. It's called Platonic, and it is all about two friends who really are just friends, but through their lives, everybody always assumes they're secretly in love, and we see them sort of navigating their family and work relationship, and it's very funny because it's the two of them and an amazing rest of the cast. And finally, because here at the Pop First, we like to celebrate all things TV, movies, and comics. What is something you are geeking out about that you're not working on? Oh, what am I not geeking out on that I'm not working on? I'm obsessed with Severance. It's one of my all-time favorite shows. I was nerding out on that. Like, I had a notebook and was taking notes every episode and being like, okay, if I can just solve this, then I'll understand what's happening here. And maybe she's actually dead at I went crazy in the best way. I mean that with all love. And, um, you know, I love the last season of Stranger Things. I'm a big fan. And um, I, it definitely prompted me to go do a whole rewatch. So now I've watched all the seasons multiple times yet again. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I love those guys. Like, I feel like we've grown up with those kids. So mm -hmm. I'm really excited to see what they do next. And is Chrissy Wake Up stuck in your head? Very much so. <laughs> Very much so. Well, Janet, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thanks, and I hope you have a great rest of the convention. This is an amazing city and one of the best cons of all time. So I am very sad to be leaving, actually. It's been a wonderful. Well, thank you all so much, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.